Last we left our intrepid organism. It was a self-replicating, lipid-bound cell with a DNA genome and protein enzymes. To see how we got to this step from a soup of organic molecules, please watch the first two videos in the Origin series, The Origin of Life Abiogenesis and The Origin of the Genetic Code. Over time, the amount of genetic material would have increased through gene duplications and the array of enzyme functions would have proliferated. Proteins that increase the rate and fidelity of DNA replication would have been selected for. This would include DNA polymerase and all the auxiliary proteins that make up the modern replication complex. Also, any proteins that could function to help repair DNA damage, be it nucleotide mismatch, single or double-stranded breaks, would clearly be beneficial and therefore would be passed down to future generations. We see these today in the simplest bacteria, which evolved long before sexual reproduction. And while evidence suggests the vast majority of genes evolved from pre-existing genes through duplication and mutation, a recent study in the peer-reviewed journal PLOS demonstrates that novel enzymes can evolve from completely random sequences in only a few generations. To learn more about the evolution of irreducibly complex systems, please watch the evolution of irreducible complexity and the evolution of the flagellum. The question is, how did this asexually reproducing organism evolve a sexually reproducing lifestyle? Many make the argument that such a transition is impossible, pointing to the fact that human sexual reproduction with its matched genitalia, multicellular gonads, dimorphic gametes, and intricate mating behaviors is irreducibly complex. If you feel this is an impediment to sexual reproduction starting, I advise you to check out a previous video of mine, The Evolution of Sex. Finally, if you think sexual reproduction has no biological benefits and therefore would not have been produced naturally through evolution, please watch The Joy of Sexual Reproduction. So the dawn of sex did not have two complex multicellular organisms going at it with matched genitals, dimorphic gametes, and complex mating rituals. Instead, the dawn of sex was simply the dawn of cells fusing, mixing their DNA, and then separating. Sex at its most basic level is the fusion of two haploid cells, meaning they only have one copy of each chromosome, to form one diploid cell, which has two copies of each chromosome. This then undergoes meiosis, which involves the replication of the DNA, followed by two cell divisions, eventually resulting in the production of four haploid cells. But things still appear irreducibly complex. If meiosis didn't exist, but cells could fuse, then their amount of DNA would continue to increase until it was eventually unsustainable, causing the cell to die. And what would be the purpose of meiosis if cells couldn't fuse? Did cell fusion and meiosis have to evolve at exactly the same time? No. Based on a number of real, peer-reviewed scientific studies, some of which I've linked in the video description, here is the most plausible scenario given the current data. Meiosis most likely evolved first. Why? There are two leading hypotheses. The first postulates that it was a mechanism to correct for errors when the DNA replicated but the cell didn't divide, while the other proposes that under some environmental conditions, organisms would prefer to be haploid while at other times they would benefit from being diploid. These are called ploidy cycles. To go from haploid to diploid only involves DNA replication without cell division, but to go back requires something similar to meiosis. Now the question is, how did meiosis evolve? People can again claim that because meiosis is such a complex series of protein interactions that it is irreducibly complex. Doesn't this argument ever get old? Let's go over this one more time. Irreducible complexity was actually a prediction of evolution published in 1918 by Dr. Herman J. Mueller. That's 34 years before Michael Behe was born. Since then, countless studies have shown that irreducibly complex systems can and do evolve through gradual steps. In fact, the yeast, Schizosaccharomyces pombi, which is a member of an ancient lineage of eukaryotes, proves that meiosis isn't even irreducible, let alone irreducibly complex. It lacks many of the genes required for meiosis found in most other eukaryotes. If you look at the genes required for meiosis, you'll discover something amazing. They either look like genes responsible for normal DNA replication, mitosis, 
DNA mutation repair, these are the proteins that allow for the intermixing of genetic material through the formation and resolution of crossovers, or chromosome condensation. These are the proteins that help pack DNA together in a manageable way. And each of these three groups would have evolved long before meiosis, once again showing that evolution makes use of pre-existing genes for novel functions. So what about cell fusion? This was actually a consequence of the evolution from prokaryotes to eukaryotes. The same changes in the bacterial plasma membrane that allowed the formation of internal membrane-bound compartments called organelles, such as the replacement of the cell wall with an internal cytoskeleton and the evolution of glycoproteins in the plasma membrane, also made it possible for two touching cells to occasionally fuse. And in case you want to make the argument, where did the internal actin cytoskeleton in eukaryotes come from? Recent studies have found actin-like polymers in bacteria. So at first, cell fusion would simply have been an accident, which meiosis could quickly correct. But that accident would have had profound consequences, sex. And as we saw in a previous video, the joy of sexual reproduction, once sex starts, evolution accelerates rapidly. Early sexual reproduction came with other benefits as well. Cells living in a hostile environment routinely go into dormant states when times are tough. Fusing with a neighbor prior to going dormant has two benefits. First, you possess twice the resources, giving you a better chance of surviving the lean times. Second, you have an extra copy of DNA, which you can use to help repair DNA mutations incurred during the stressful period. Once good times return, it's best to switch back to haploid so you can grow and divide as quickly as possible. However, because of the formation and imperfect resolution of DNA crossovers, a consequence of repairing breaks in the DNA, the four haploid cells will have DNA that is a mix of the two parent cells. They are the offspring of a sexual union. We can still see remnants of this early phase of sexual reproduction in many simple eukaryotes today, such as vulvox, which can be triggered to initiate sex under stressful conditions. Early sex was a simple accident, which evolved into a basic survival strategy. It made use of pre-existing genes, which after gene duplication events were fine-tuned through mutation and natural selection for the purposes of reducing DNA copy number, meiosis, and cell fusion. And as a consequence, we were left with a mechanism that unintentionally mixed DNA greatly increasing genetic variation, causing the rate of evolution to explode.